Universe 25. This is the series of experiments on the mouse universe that American behaviorist Dr. John Bumpass Calhoun began in the 1960s. The most famous of these experiments is Universe 25, which he documented in his 1973 paper Death Squared, The Explosive Growth and Demise of a Mouse Population. Universe 25 experiment recorded in the paper Death Squared, the Explosive Growth and Demise of a Mouse Population The experiment was conducted in a metal box measuring 2.57 meters in length, 1.37 meters in width and 1.37 meters in height on the farm, which could accommodate a total of 3,840 mice. The center of the box is evenly divided into 16 living areas, each with its own drinking fountain, food storage and 16 resting nests, each of which can comfortably house 15 rats. There is good ventilation, constant temperature, endless food and water, no natural enemies, and no infectious diseases. The only thing the rats have to do is enjoy life. This is the ideal utopia for the rats. That's why they called Calhoun's experiment Rat Utopia. The 25th Universe experiment spanned five years, starting in July 1968 and ending in May 1973, and was divided into four stages, A, B, C, and D, which corresponds to the four stages of formation, abode, destruction, and annihilation that the Buddhists say that every universe undergoes. Stage A, Struggle Four pairs of mice were born just 48 days ago. Each of them is healthy and lively. With a new world and a new sky, the happy mice soon started to mark their respective territories, chose their nests and started their colony life. On the 104th day, the second generation was born. Stage B, Development From this point on, the rat population begins to explode, doubling in size every 55 days. The best males are found in nests with a high birth rate, while others have few or none. Social differentiation occurs. Stage C, Equilibrium On day 315, the total number of rats reached 620. From then on, the reproduction rate slows down significantly, doubling every 145 days. At this point, social problems emerged. The males begin to lose their ability to defend their territory, and the lactating females become aggressive and take over the role of the males. Violence became common. Surplus males had to quit after being bitten and scarred. Same-sex consoling and socially withdrawn males begin to appear, and females become less fertile, and some begin to fail to conceive, or kick out their newborns and leave them to fend for themselves. Society becomes chaotic. Stage D, Death After the 560th day, the mouse population peaks at 2,200 mice, and then begins to show negative growth. The birth rate and survival rate of newborn mice drops dramatically. On day 600, the last surviving mouse is born. Then a strange phenomenon occurs. The male mice that quit no longer fought or pursued the girls. Apart from eating and drinking, they were only interested in one thing, grooming their fur. At this point, although some nests are overcrowded, 20% of the nests are still empty. The females who are no longer fertile, crawl into these empty nests and hide. From then on, as no new mice are born, Universe 25 enters a slow death phase. The new mice were no longer aggressive, had not learned any other social behaviors, and lacked any interest in the opposite sex. All they knew was to focus on themselves and spend a lot of time grooming their fur every day. Calhoun calls these mice beautiful mice. The day the last mouse was born was the first day of the death stage. In fact, the death stage begins much earlier than that. From day 560, the population of mice is actually barely balanced between life and death, but from day 600 onwards, the number of pups born starts to drop dramatically. Day 920 was the last day that a mouse was born, and from that point on, Universe 25 went into a slow, but steady death. On May 23, 1973, the last male mouse died and the end of Universe 25 was near. At the end of the line, it didn't work out the way some optimists thought, 
that there would be a group of mice that would revive Universe 25. It was too late. Everyone was old. A survey conducted on day 1588, 668 days after the last mouse was born, showed that the average age of the surviving mice had reached 776 days, 200 days past menopause. Even if some of the mice had developed the ability to reproduce, they would have passed the age of reproduction. The story of a small group revitalizing a species when it was on the verge of extinction was really just a fantasy. The universe had never experienced a catastrophe or a disease, and there was no need to worry about hunger or shelter. The mice are healthy and live to a ripe old age. If there is no external cause, then one must look into society to find the problem. The problem actually began to emerge in the third stage, when population growth slowed down. The few young that were lucky enough not to be abandoned by their mothers at birth were driven out of the nest early. Most of them were forced to join the society before they could establish any kinship or affection. The societies that accepted them were already overcrowded, and there was no place for them in society. Any attempts to socialize with other mice were mechanically interrupted by mice passing by. Without basic socialization, more complex social relationships are impossible. For these mice, love, mother-child relationships and competition are all distant and alien. In another small experiment that lasted 300 days, deconstruction showed that only 20% of the 148 female mice showed signs of conception, placenta scars in the uterus. Under normal circumstances the vast majority of females would have conceived more than five mice. This is much higher than the experimental values. In contrast to the hermit females, who live high above the ground, are the males, whom we call beautiful mice. They refuse to fight and never approach the females with sexual intent. These mice have no wounds or messy areas, just like perfect specimens. Their behavior consisted of eating, sleeping, and taking care of themselves, and they appeared to be unconcerned with anything other than themselves. In this crowded society, these mice completely lost the character of a young mouse and became indifferent to everything, ignoring everything, and only interested in their own likes and dislikes. In the researcher's opinion, these mice with only the most basic survival needs are like the shells left behind after the death of a soul. Almost all of the mice born in the second half of Universe 25 are included in these beautiful mice. As their predecessors aged, Universe 25 came to an end. During the period of population decline, the previous generation of mice had passed the age of reproduction, but the new generation of mice had not been bred to reproduce at all. So there was no struggle, no war, no disease, no disaster, and Universe 25 met its death in peace and quiet. In 1972, towards the end of his experiments, Professor Calhoun's colleague, Dr. Halsey Marsden, borrowed a few mice from Universe 25 to conduct some experiments of his own. He placed the selected beautiful mice from Universe 25 into a new universe just for them, as the new Adam and Eve. However, even in a low population environment, all of the Adam and Eve lost any ability to reorganize society or repopulate, and Dr. Marsden went so far as to compare the beautiful mice to those grown in a normal environment. Dr. Marsden even paired the beautiful rats with female rats that had grown up in a normal environment, but that didn't have any effect either. These superficially noble and elegant mice have lost the ability and desire to communicate in their hearts. Their souls were dead. At the time Calhoun wrote this paper, there were still more than a hundred of these beautiful mice left in Utopia, and he predicted that the last one would die in May 1973 on the 1780th day of the experiment. He predicted that the last mouse would die in May 1973, on the 1780th day of the experiment, and that Universe 25 would be annihilated. In the early 1960s, Calhoun had begun experimenting with such rats, with similar results. His colleague Dr. Halsey Marsden tried to take a few beautiful mice and put them in a brand new box in the hope that they would regain confidence in their new environment and build a new universe. However, these beautiful mice were still not interested in reproducing their offspring, and their behavioral patterns were permanently changed. After repeated experiments, 
Calhoun finally adjusted the parameters of the Mouse Garden of Eden well enough for him to observe enough abnormal behavior. The rat population reached its peak and remained there for about a year, during which time he observed the following anomalies. 1. The rat became increasingly violent. 2. Rats became sexually aberrant. 3. Adult rats gave up caring for their young. 4. Rat population growth slowed dramatically and eventually collapsed. 5. The collapse of the entire Garden of Eden did not resume after the rat population was drastically reduced. This final result came as a shock to Calhoun, who had initially predicted that the population might show some kind of periodic oscillation. He analyzed why Eden eventually collapsed, as the rats that were born and grew up later in life seemed to have been in some kind of juvenile state, where they lost the ability to court, mate, and raise their young, ultimately leading to the complete destruction of Eden. And that got Calhoun thinking. He had previously thought that the stress of overpopulation was the cause of the mice's erratic behavior. However, this is clearly not the cause of these beautiful rats. In fact, the maximum number of rats in Universe 25 is far below the 3840 limit. So what is the reason for the rats to turn heaven into hell instead of enjoying themselves? Calhoun's final analysis suggests that it is because the conditions in the utopia are so good that the rats live long lives, the older generation occupies a limited number of roles in the community and refuses to retire, and the new generation has to fight against the elders in order to obtain a social role. As a result, both sides suffer, leading to the collapse of society. In other words, the main reason is that the young rats can't find a role for themselves in society. The first generation became violent and the second generation simply withdrew from society. The fate of 2,000 rats in three years and their story is not an absolute prophecy. But there is a cautionary tale that cannot be ignored. Whether it is the collapse of social skills due to high population density or the collapse of the social fabric due to the saturation of positions of responsibility, the reality of the situation can be seen. The historical traces of the rise and fall of Universe 25, the decline of the male mouse's ability, the female mouse taking up the male mouse's position, the decline of the care and nurturing of the offspring, the deterioration of the social skills of the new mice, the hermit and the beautiful mouse, can all be seen in reality. Gender equality, the rise of women's rights, the dinks, the circle of friends, herbivorous men, can be seen in reality. And with the rise and development of big cities, the world's population tends to concentrate more and more in convenient but densely populated cities, indirectly contributing to the increase in population density. Most notably, all of this happened at a time when the number of mice was well below the upper limit of the 25th universe's capacity. Even during the most densely populated periods, 20% of the nests that are the lowest of the upper limit are always uninhabited by mice. People can design and count the hard upper limit on the number of people that can live in a region, but when a population is too dense is not something that can be determined by simple numbers and statistics. Of course, for mice, love, mother-child, and territorial relationships are already the most complex social relationships in their society. For human society, which is even more complex, no one knows what will become of humans in an overpopulated society. Maybe people will figure out a way to live successfully, or maybe they will go the way of Universe 25 and die in peace. Utopia, the ultimate human dream, a perfect world. But Utopia, to be sure, is a place where souls die. Then he said that if a similar series of phenomena occurs in the future, the end is inevitable, the disappearance of the species. This statement attracted the skepticism of many scientists. They criticized that human society is much more complex and advanced than rats, so how can you jump to such a rash conclusion? Calhoun's Prophecy However, looking back 50 years later, Calhoun's experiment really was a divine prediction of the future of mankind. Almost at the same time that Calhoun started to create the mouse universe, that is, in the early 60s, the global fertility rate climbed to its peak, with an average of five children per woman, and in the late 60s, the fertility rate started to decline, and has never risen again, and relative to the mouse universe, it was in stage C, 
the equilibrium stage. In this stage, the rats became violent. In the human society in the 1960s and 1970s, young people in both the East and the West coincidentally entered a period of restlessness and started to become aggressive. Let's not talk about the East, we all know it. In the West, street revolutions were prevalent, feminism was on the rise, and anti-social and anti-traditional hippies and punk culture began to flourish. However, in the 1980s, a new generation of young people stopped being militant. At this time, the phenomenon of the socially withdrawn beautiful mouse began to sprout quietly, and in the early 1990s, after the bursting of Japan's bubble economy, the emergence of the otaku group brought this phenomenon to the surface. The otaku did not go out to look for a job, nor were they willing to socialize, and they were not interested in marriage. They stayed in their rooms from morning to night and relied on their parents to help them out with their lives. This phenomenon has worsened since the rise of the internet, and has even spread to the rest of the world. China calls these people the gnawing old people, Americans call them the homing people, the United Kingdom is the nits, and Australia is the kangaroo people. At the end of 2018, the Japanese government conducted a survey on this phenomenon and found that the number of residents staying at home actually reached 1 million. More than 60% of them are over 40 years old. In other words, many people may have been living at home since the 1990s, and have been living at home for 23 years. Along with this phenomenon, fewer and fewer young people are willing to have children. Fertility rates are declining rapidly, especially in economically advanced areas. In addition, according to the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency's CIA, 2022 World Fertility Projections, nearly 60% of the world's 227 countries will have fertility rates below the 2.1 generational replacement threshold. Almost none of the developed countries will escape. Most of the countries with high fertility rates are small African countries. This means that humanity is facing a demographic crisis. Not overpopulation, but rather a shrinking population and a problem with racial continuity. If we don't deal with it properly, we will face the danger of extinction of the species, as Calhoun predicted. Governments are well aware of this, and they are trying to encourage it, but the young people just won't budge, as if they have lost faith in society. Is this also caused by two good material conditions? just like the mouse utopia? We do not know. But there is one thing, material satisfaction does not necessarily bring happiness. Calhoun's experiment has already proved this point. Humans feel that creating a small world of great material abundance for rats is the greatest happiness for them. They should show their gratitude and enjoy themselves. But the rats say no with their actions. So what is the key to resolving the crisis? Calhoun not only predicted the future of mankind in his paper, but also recommended a solution, the Tree of Life from the Bible. In the Book of Revelation, it is said that on both sides of the river flowing with the water of life, there grows the Tree of Life, which bears twelve kinds of fruits, and bears fruits every month, and the leaves of the tree can heal the peoples of the nations. Calhoun said that the evolution of mankind is walking on a path leading to the Tree of Life, and that by grasping the tree of life, there will be peace all along the way. Although this is a rather cryptic statement, the general idea is clear, when a crisis arises, faith can be relied upon to overcome it. Although the scientific community does not recognize this statement, Calhoun was received by Pope Paul VI in September of that year, and I wonder if it was because of this paper. We don't know what kind of faith Calhoun's tree of life represents, and how it can help mankind out of their predicament. But there is a wonderful example of how faith can bring happiness to mankind.